Hello, everyone, and welcome to Moon Ride. This is Dave Johnson for Channeling the Man in the Moon today. I'm going to do a political reading on MTG. I want to see if she's going to be able to oust uh, Mike Johnson and, and what the details are around uh, that. I also want to take a look at Merrick Garland because it just seems like he's always fooling around and he's just so tepid and he apparently didn't send some paperwork to the Southern District of New York when it should have been sent. It only went out a couple of years ago. It was just really strange behavior. Uh, I'd really like it if you take a look at Cosmic Consciousness Collective. I'll put a little link here. It used to be the V Group, but we found that lots of people had the same name. It was quite confusing. Follow this uh, link here and uh, take a look. It's got some brilliant channeling, uh, trans channeling. So let's look at MTG. It's always funny to do this work because you get such amazing images. Of course, she looks like Cruella DeVille. Uh, and um, she's there doing all these things that you're not supposed to do, like smoke cigarettes and mm. so what's interesting about this is, you know, it's like uh, they will lead each other. Republicans will attack each other when they run out of things to attack. They start, you know, fighting uh, against each other for power because that's really what they're after. They're not after any kind of resolution. They don't want to help America. So I can see Mike Johnson just getting irritated. Like, you know, woman, know your place, kind of. Uh, they're just both so awful. And he's irritated, like, Ugh. and she's, of course, couldn't care less that she's irritating. That's That's who she is, right? So... They're having this sort of psychic sort of, you know, laser-eyed fight against each other. And he's just so over it. He is just rolling his eyes. He's just like, somebody get this lady under control. Serves him right, you know. <laughs> These are the people who sent attack dogs after everybody in opposition. Now the attack dogs are attacking them. And he's turning to a weary GOP. One thing I hope you'll all notice is that the GOP people are quitting left and right. They've only got one person majority now because so many people have quit. This is a big deal when the majority uh, loses its majority because a bunch of people are quitting. That tells you they don't have much hope and they don't really believe in what they're doing anymore. And I see the uh, Mike Johnson turning to a whole body of GOPs and they're just like grumbling and depressed and... It's like they all want to go, you know, have a, you know, get hammered, you know, because they're so wasted on this. They go home depressed every day. They don't think their future is bright. And they're starting to get quite angry at MTG. They're starting to uh, think of how to get rid of her because she's just throwing a wrench in everything. She's not thinking of, uh, certainly not the country, but she's not even thinking of the Republican Party. She just cares about herself. She really wants to be vice president. Hmm. She didn't get made prom queen the way that she wanted to. And this is her chance as far as she concerns that Trump does not like her. He just doesn't like her. You know, Trump only really likes women that are attractive. So uh, that's not her. Um, he would pick the dumbest person on the planet as a running mate before her as long as they were attractive. He is a very superficial person, and he believes that that is how other people are, so it would not make sense to not have an attractive VP. Yeah, he'd like the, you know, is it something gnome lady who he kind of flirts with, uh, who he refers to as, you know, so beautiful. He would like her. Katie Gnome, he would like her merely because of the way she looks, but also because he knows how... Republican men, op men operate, so he won't pick her. He thinks she's gross. I mean, he thinks she's kind of trashy. So what else are you doing? It's just really a, like a sort of pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. I don't think she believes it will go anywhere. She just thinks that might convince Trump to pick her as VP. 
it will have no benefit to anyone other than uh, just for the moment. Look, the Republicans are going to get rid of her. She keeps throwing a wrench in everything. She thinks that the people have been given this sort of conservative mandate and she really believes all the hot air that she's just out there with that conservative mandate. The Republicans are being realistic. They know they're going to get smashed in the polls. Trump is starting to lose. It looks like Trump can't pay his bills. It's going to get worse. He's going to be in court while he's trying to run for president, but he can't talk about it. There's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff going on here. And people like uh, Jim Jordan are quite frightened. They, uh, When they are no longer the majority, they might have to answer to some of the things that they did around January 6th. And they're just, uh, they're ready to do anything. And right now, the worst thing that they could do is screw up the economy. That will be a death knell to any potential Republican majority in the Senate. And she's just like that annoying person in class who just won't shut up, who just tells you their dumb opinion every day. And everybody's like, uh, uh. even people who kind of agree with her are like, oh, God, could she stop talking, please? It's funny because um, she's kind of setting her own hair on fire in my image now. She's just like, she doesn't, she's not smart enough to realize that she's causing her own demise. Yeah, and that's exactly what's going to happen to her. She has uh, upset the Republican apple cart one too many times, and she won't be picked as VP. She's just going to go down the drain. Anything else on her? Yeah, very. it's very karmic. She's very much getting uh, what she deserves for being so selfish. When you're a selfish person, you think only of yourself, uh, not even your team. Well, this is the consequence is that nobody cares about you anymore. And that's really where she's going. And it will have long lasting impacts. I don't think we'll ever, we'll ever see or hear of her again, except perhaps on some extremely conservative news sites. I'm just going to look at her and say, you done? Yeah, she's done. She actually has a cheap crown on her head and she takes it off. Right. And I say cheap, it's almost like tin. Right. And she takes it off. So, how will this affect? How will this affect the speaker? Mm, good riddance to bad rubbish. He's just like, yep, move her out of the way. It's not good for him. It doesn't make him look good. But okay, it's not. He's not that worried about it. He's not that perturbed. He's just like, yeah, here's me and my power getting rid of. Some sniveling little idiot. He's a very arrogant person, too. He really believes all of his uh, smoke. Things will go on somewhat as they are for him, but it will be a little bit harder for Mike Johnson to lead. He will get more grief, more death threats from his own party, you know, more... You know, just it'll be a little bit harder every single day for the rest of his uh, tenure. So let's take a look at Merrick Garland. Merrick, what are you doing? Seriously, what are you doing? I can understand being fair, but this is just, it's like he's sabotaging everything. It's like he's working for Trump. Why didn't you get the papers on time? That's what I'm going to tell first. Why didn't you get the papers to Southern District of New York? A little bit, you know, piglet uh, from Winnie the Pooh. It's always running around wearing, oh, 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 oh. There's a bit of a piglet aspect to him. To his credit, Merrick Garland is saying there's a lot more that you don't know. That there are, there's so much material here. Okay, but why New York? What what's up with the SDN one?
it has a bit of a feeling like he didn't want Trump to get some information before other cases were presented. You know, when uh, Trump is uh, sort of given that case, then, uh, you know, he, when he's charged, his lawyers get to see the information and he didn't want them to see the information first before other cases proceeded. Okay, well, that makes some sense. But he is strictly a by the rules book kind of guy. Just go and, you know, you have to do these, all of these things. It's, you know, a typical frustration that we have with Democrats is just they don't, they don't, they don't have any power. They don't have any force. They don't just go for it. They are always tepid and trying to be fair and nice. You know, Republicans don't try to be fair and nice. He is that, a real believer in the old school Democrat kind of methodology of it'll all be okay in the end. But he is having a bit of regret. It's starting to seem like he shouldn't have done that. He's starting to feel the pain of his decisions that people are being becoming very critical of him. Yeah, I'm just getting a very by the book kind of person. And miscalculation. I think that there was just some kind of, you know, he didn't he didn't tee up the cases the way that he thought. It's also in and to his credit, you know, when we're talking about cases that have never ever, never experienced in our society. American people never, ever had to do this. There's no case where the president is accused of you know, 91 different counts of 10 crimes. It's just not, it just doesn't happen. So being that this is novel, he's like, it's going to take a long time to go through these systematic, it has to be very clear, it has to be very fair. We don't want the charges uh, reversed after we win because of some small detail. But I just get the feeling he's too careful. You know, it's almost like you check something seven times. Well, you know, twice is enough. It's just a very, it's just a very nervous kind of person. Like everybody's watching me. I have to make sure everything's perfect. It's sort of a, almost like a, a sort of perfect obsession. He is looking at a horizon, and the horizon is you know, pretty bright. That is, as he looks forward, he can see convictions. So he's a lot less worried about you know, the timing of this because he is certain that Trump will be convicted. He can see the light at the end of this tunnel. He has access to all this information. And my response to this is, yeah, well, I don't think this is going to happen, but Trump could be president and wipe this stuff away. Shouldn't you be hurrying up? He say he shakes his head no. Hmm. He's got a point. He says, look, this is teeing up in a lot of ways just how I want it to tee up. Just during Trump's it's according, you know, it's Trump's fault, but just just during the uh, election period, he's gonna be really busy. He's gonna be facing all these trials. He doesn't have any more money. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse until the day of the election. This was uh, not a bad, not a bad strategy in a sense that, you know, we have hit him now that he's really losing cash. He is uh, going to be hit with all of these suits. He may not have enough money to, to run. Uh, he may not have enough money to you know, campaign. He may not have enough money to. You know, he's sucking all the campaign money for himself and his legal fees, which is going to take away from all of the senators who are running. He's like, in a way, you know, you might think this timing is really bad, but actually it is fantastic. It is timed perfectly to drain the coffers of the Republican Party. Now he's like, hey, I didn't plan that. OK, that just that just happened. I was just following the rules. But look what happened. And uh, I'm not letting him off the hook. I think we need some more uh, assertive people on the left. 
But uh, to his credit, or should I say to all our credit or for the credit of spirit, these things are working out really well when we think about it. Look at Trump and his numbers. Look at Trump and his bank account. Look at Trump and his schedule. The man is battling so much. And really, his time is going to be taken up instead of going to primaries and, you know, talking and supporting senators and things. He's going to be in court. And he's going to, his blood pressure is going to be going through the roof in court. He's going to be distracted and stressed. The light gets brighter and brighter and brighter as I look from Merrick Garland's uh, point of view. And Merrick Garland says, look, in the future, people will not judge me that harshly. Presently, people are. But when people see the results and see how clear the cases are, it will be much, uh, it, I will be more, uh, louder than I am right now. I still don't quite get why he sent those paperwork late. Why did you send that paperwork late? I don't get a great answer here. It's just the same one I got before, which was, well, I had these other cases that I was dealing with. I didn't want Trump to know something. It was important that these cases go first. It it wasn't, you know, particularly careful. You know, he he strange that he made such a, a sort of oversight and error. But I do think that to some degree it was. There's no reason why he couldn't have teed up this case. It's almost like he just didn't think this was the case that was the most important. But again, I want to point out, it will work out in the end. Trump will not succeed. These cases are really serious, and they will have serious consequences. At least they will prevent him from running an effective campaign. Thanks so much for watching.